So in the previous tutorial, we set up our Slack node here and connected it to the start trigger. What we're going to do now instead is connect the Slack node to a GitHub trigger so we can reference dynamic data that's happening from a GitHub event and send that in a message. Because that's a bit more useful than sending a static message manually. So what we'll want to do is click the plus button here. Since we want to add a trigger, click on the trigger section here and we'll search for GitHub. We'll click on that. Now we'll disconnect the start node, we'll tuck it away here and instead connect the GitHub trigger to the Slack node and we'll set it up. Just like the Slack node, the first thing we're going to want to do is select a credential to use with the GitHub trigger node. In this case, again, I'm going to use OAuth2 and select one I already have. In the previous video, we are showing how to do this, however. And so once we set up credentialing, the next step is to set up the various properties necessary for this trigger. In this case, we need to add the repository owner, which is myself, and I have a test repo. So we'll add that. And then lastly, for the GitHub trigger, you want to select the events that you'd like to monitor for to trigger this workflow. In this case, we're going to trigger it every time someone comments on a commit. So I'll click on that. Now, for any node, when you're looking at it and you're not sure exactly what one of these inputs or properties might be, you can always open the documentation by this link, which then opens in a new tab, has an example workflow, and sometimes FAQs, and various other information to help you uh, understand how to set up that node. So the GitHub trigger is set up. We'll close it. Now before we test it, we need to save the workflow. So we'll go down here and commit hit save as. You can hit Command or Control S as you would on a desktop app. So we'll add that. Now if we click this Execute Workflow button, we see that we're waiting for the webhook call. Since we have a external trigger here, we're now waiting for that event to occur for the next two minutes, and we'll pull it into this Editor UI here. So I'm going to go over to a commit that I have already, and we'll add a comment. And now we see that the workflow was just executed, and if we open up the GitHub trigger, we can see that GitHub has sent us a response. Now there's a whole lot of information in here, but if we collapse these objects, we can see there was a, a header in here, but in the body we're having this information on the comment, on the repository and the sender, so it looks like it's working. So the next step would be to open our Slack node, and we're going to use N8N expressions to reference some data from that GitHub node. So Right now we have a static message. Instead, we're going to click this cog here and add an expression. Now, every input across nodes in N8N has this cog on the right-hand side where you can add an expression, which opens up our expression editor where we can now build out an expression that is a combination of static text like this, variables from previous nodes, as well as even snippets of JavaScript to generate a response. So in this case, let's add a little label for our message and go find it here. We'll go into nodes, we'll go into the GitHub trigger. We want its output data, the data that it got from GitHub. It's some JSON data in there. And we'll drill down here into the body, into the comment. And we see we've got the body of the comment. That seems to be the actual text of the comments. So we'll click that. And so now we see what we're Pasting is a snippet of code. This is just a JavaScript variable. But in the bottom here, then, we're seeing how that renders out. So that's looking as expected. And then we'll also add the name of the person who posted it, which here is in the user. We'll scroll down and we'll click that there. So posted by Max to catch. And lastly, we'll add the um, URL for that user, because maybe you want to go check out their profile. We'll see here, there seems to be an HTML URL. It's github.com slash max to catch. Perfect. So now we have a, a well-prepared message and we can close this. And the next step would be to test this node. We'll do that by clicking this execute node button here. We see we got a response back. We'll check in Slack. 
and we see that we've got the message here. Sack sent us some information also, but the message seems to be working. We have the message. This is a comment posted by Max to catch in the URL. Now, what we did by clicking this execute node button is we took the data from the GitHub trigger and used that to perform our Slack step. So what's nice about that is we didn't have to create another commit comment. We use the data that's already um, loaded into this trigger, which wouldn't be the case if we click the execute workflow button. It clears all the data so we can do a fresh run. So execute node is very useful when you're building a workflow so that you don't have to be creating a JIRA ticket or something uh, multiple times. So now to wrap up, we've used expressions to reference data from our GitHub trigger to post a Slack message with dynamic data. In the next video, we'll expand upon this and learn some uh, more concepts. Thanks.